Good morning, Hope City Church. It's me, Pastor Jim. Hey, it's great to to uh, have the privilege and honor of of um, sharing this word with you today. I pray God's blessing on all of you. I pray that God has uh, strengthened you, and God has. I know that He has all of us that are in Him. He's kept us uh, going. I'm uh, also. Uh, doing this message today away from the church and I, um, we're going to be prepared to go over later on and, and serve you there at the church and and possibly give you some updates of possibly going forward with the service. Uh, things may be changing now, but God is always with us. We have an opportunity to, to still see each other. I pray that many more of you uh, will listen to uh, God's word on this. It's not about me. <clears throat> it's just uh, something I believe that God has given me, as he, I believe he has today, a word for you. Those of you who I know, and those, if you're tuning in, if you're friends or family of mine, and you're listening during this time, I just believe that God has just called you to this time to listen. I uh, thank you uh, for, for doing so, and uh, if you are first time uh, listening, if you would subscribe to the channel, it will help. Hopefully, it, the word will get out to others, and God in his way will use it mightily for whatever he's going to use it for. Um, let's get into the word. Let me pray. Father, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we come before you. Lord, I thank you that you're the author and the finisher of our faith. May our trust and, and hope grow in you. May we draw nearer to you and closer to you every day. May we seek you, your, seek your face, Holy Spirit, guide, lead us in and direct us to do the things that you would have us to do. May we see your word, which is living and powerful as a source for our daily life and our daily faith in you. We thank you, Lord, for your love, your grace, and your everlasting mercy, which endures throughout all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the days I shared, uh, family, I've been, uh, God has been giving me these words through my quiet time. That's why we're going all over the scripture. And uh, we're not like we we were. And hopefully, if I'm able to start, I'll, I'll finish up the book of Luke. But until then, I'm just doing uh, short messages from my quiet time. Today's message, uh, the foundation verse is from Galatians 2.20. And let's get right into it. In Galatians 2.20, and I'm reading from the King, New King James Version, it says this. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm, I want to read it again from the Amplified Bible because there's a portion of this verse I want you to hear, and that's the focus of the day. I've entitled the message, The Life Which I Now Live in the Flesh, I Live by, hear this, Faith in the Son of God. In the, the Amplified Bible, what it does is it, it takes the, the, the scripture and it, it, it keys in on certain words in the, in the translation and adds meaning and, and clarity to the passage uh, or the verse that we're, we're focusing on. And it does that by giving us the meaning of the words at that time. So here's what the Amplified Bible says. I have been crucified with Christ. In him, I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ, the Messiah, lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in, like this, by adherence to and reliance on and complete trust in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Now, the focus of that that I wanted to get is, it says, and we, we read in, in the, the New King James Version, it says that uh, the, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. And the Amplified Bible tells us what that faith in the Son of God is. And it's but we adhere to him, we rely on him, and we have complete trust in the Son of God. To me, that's helpful for whatever we're going through today. 
you know, all the things we're going through in our world today, the pandemic and all these things, we rely on him. That doesn't mean we go out in blind face, but he's given us certain rules. You know, he's told us that we need to follow the, the, the laws of the land. We need to go under our government. Hey, you know what? Scripture also tells us, just these are aside, something the Holy Spirit just give me right now. But it says that the, the, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. You want to watch a real miracle? Get on your knees and ask God to change and to adjust what our governors and our leaders and our president is doing and saying and watch God do that. He's able to make changes to them regardless of who they are. I remember a passage in scripture where Saul was chasing after David and he found out that he was in a city and that they, he was uh, in a place where the, that, that Samuel, I mean, that, that uh, David was in the city and, and, and David was prophesying with a no, number of other people. And Saul went after him to capture him. And, and the scripture says when Saul got that, he fell under the power of God and he prophesied himself. God is able to, to make changes. <laughs> well, in, other, in, in, in order to uh, help us just kind of get an understanding of what this scripture is saying and what this scripture is talking about and about faith, I want to use a passage in scripture that also came, that came from my reading this week. Now, Galatians, that passage of scripture led me to Galatians 2.20. But the passage of scripture from my quiet time this week that really hit me on this subject was this. And it comes from 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 16, starting with verse 1. And I'm just going to read these nine verses to you. I'm reading again from the New King James Version. It says, In the 36th year of the reign of Asa, Basha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah, that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. Now Asa brought sil bought silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of the Lord of the king's house and sent them to Ben-Hadon, king of Syria, who dwelt in Damascus, saying, Let there be a treaty between you and me, as there was between my father and your father. Here I have sent you silver and gold. Come, break your treaty with Basha, king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from me. So Ben Hadad, king of, of, I mean, so Ben Hadad heeded King Asa, and sent the captains of his army against the cities of Israel. They attacked Ion, Dan, Abel, Mam, and the storage city in Naphtali. Now it happened when Basha heard it that he stopped building Ramah and ceased his work. Then King Asa took all Judah and they carried away the stones and timber of Ramah which Basha had used for. The build for building, and with them he built Geba and Mizpah. At that time, Hanai the seer, the seer came to uh, the king of Judah and said to him, "Because you have relied on the king of Assyria and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the king of Assyria has escaped from your hand." Were the Ethiopians and and the Lubum, not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen. Yet because you relied on the Lord, he has delivered them. Yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole world, earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. And this you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. So here's the thing, and this is what I wanted to share. Let me give you some background on this little, this passage here. Um, because of, of a, something that happened long ago after God brought down Solomon's kingdom and he divided the kingdom, there was the, the kingdom of Judah, which is part of God's people, and the kingdom of Israel, which is also part of God's kingdom. And that, this is a, can be a, a long explanation, so I'm going to keep it very short and just kind of to the point. They were always at war, all from the time that, that the separation took place, for most of the time, the nation of Israel and the nation of Judah were at war. And basically, for most of the, the portion, the, the, the kings that served in the nation of Israel did not serve the Lord. 
and most of the kings that were kings of from Judah that were oversaw just the, the Judah the tribe of Judah they did serve God during the separation this is one of the war times and and uh, Ben Hadad the king of Israel was at war against the king of Judah so not too long before this there was a, a nation, several nations that had come out against the nation of Judah. Uh, Judah had somewhere in the neighbor, neighborhood of 500,000 soldiers. And these nations that came up against them had over a million and a half soldiers and, and uh, they came into battle. And King Asa, he lifted his voice to the Lord and said, God, you're able to help us. Will you help us? And the Bible said that God delivered the, that nation by his word. He told him he was going to do it before. Then he came in and he delivered those kingdoms into the hands of Judah. Judah totally defeated them, wiped them out, turned them back. Now here it is. A smaller army comes up against him. And even with his own people, God is able to do things. And God was able to turn away the, the attack that Judah was having on on, I mean, that Jerusalem, that Israel was having on Judah. God was able to turn him away. Instead, he went to this king of, of Syria, and he came to them, and he and he and he um he, he came to this king. Uh, um, um, I'm sorry, I lost my place here. Uh, he came to Ben Hadad, king of Syria, and he came to him, and he because at that time. Uh, Syria was the strongest nation at that time. They were taking out nations even like Egypt. They were, they were coming in and, and they were wiping out nations. They were the fear of that time. And so he went to them and he asked them. He took, he, he took a bribe to this king, to Ben-Hadad. And he said, you know, uh, I need you to turn away Israel and the king of Basha. I need you to turn him away from me and have an alliance with me. And he did that. Now, for the most part, the king of Syria was not a follower of Christ. And God came in and he dealt with Asia because he didn't have faith in the word of God. <laughs> and that's what something I want to talk about today for you and I. You know, see, there are things that come about there. You know, we one of the 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 things that I want to encourage believers, you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, having an eye on what's going on in the world. As a matter of fact, in Scripture, when it tells us about how the last days are going to be, it gives us things to look for. And so I believe that you and I always have to be uh, to to be watchful of the things that are going on in the world yet god is aware of every step everything that's going to happen in his time things are going to happen just as they said in scripture i don't have to fear i need to be a man of faith i'm going to tell you as i was studying this as i was preparing for this as i, as I was even in the first portion of my quiet time of this i was very convicted by um, where my faith is and what I have to do. And I, and I thank God and the Holy Spirit for redirecting me. It's something I'm going to have to continue to work on and you're going to have to continue to work on. But let me give you some things that will help you through this. We don't want to be like Asa because the, here's the thing is he had a walk with God. The, the scripture says that he was a good king, yet he had failures. And it just lets me know that you and I have to be diligent to continue to walk in God, to continue to have faith in God. Let me to give you some things that you and I, the scripture tells us uh, to do in our trust with God. I'm going to just go through some, some passages of scripture. I have about four or five of them, and I want to share them with you. I'm going from the Genesis to Revelation. In my quiet time um, daily, there's a an Old Testament verse, uh, there's a Psalm and a Proverb and a New Testament verse, and that's kind of what I'm going to do today. In Levit Leviticus 19.4 says, Do not turn to idols, nor make yourself molded image. God says this, I am the Lord your God. 
let me tell you just strictly what that scripture is saying to you and I. It's saying, don't trust in stuff. Hey, we got money in our banks. We got uh, maybe our house, our car. We have uh, a job. We have power by based on our job or the people that serve us or whatever. Uh, people that uh, work for us, I mean, uh, those type of things. Some of you may have that. I don't have that. But we, we, we can tend to trust in those things. And God says, you know what? Don't trust in those things. Trust in me. I'm the Lord. That's the thing that's going to give you peace. Psalms 56, 4 says this. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? Here, here's what I have to simply do. And it takes you and I to be daily in his word, in his word as much as possible. Now, that's what I do in my quiet time in the morning. I get to his word first and put that as the first portion of my day. <clears throat> and I hope that you would do that too. And maybe even, and then throughout the day, if something comes up, I'm, I'm back in there. I have to trust in what his word says. And in his word, it gives us peace. In his word, it gives us comfort. It gives us direction because that's what God, he's going to keep his word. He's a, a God that keeps his promises. His works, his word is true. A, a familiar scripture uh, for many of you, Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. To me, this verse uh, sort of just speaks for itself. You know, first of all, I got to put all my trust in him with every all part of my heart. One of the things I'm seeing, seeing here with believers today is that many believers are trying to figure it out. And I, I, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I just need to, what we need to do is look and just see what, how the events of today and what's going on today, how it lines up with the word of God. We need to look to his word for instruction and direction. We need to be still and quiet in this and God will give us direction. And finally, the passage of scripture, and I thought the Holy Spirit just led me here, and I thought it was great. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, here's what it says. We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the providence of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond the ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. We, we expected to die. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely on God who raises the dead. Now, that was from the New Living Translation. And I love that translation. The Apostle Paul talks about a, a time when he was in the province of Asia and he was going through a struggle and, and things looked uh, fearfully fatal. But he, he said they came to the point, and that's what I believe God will bring us to. I believe we're in a time uh, similar to that right now. We can't trust in men. We can't trust in anybody. We have to totally rely on God. We're wondering which direction to go. And God is just saying, hey, trust in me. I'm God. You and I, we need to trust in him. Rely on him. Get to the place where he brings us the comfort that he should. We have to stop relying on ourselves. Stop relying on others. We need to rely on on God because God can do all things. See, finally, guys, family and loved ones, our, our, our trust in God is a confident, constant effort. Our trust in God is a constant effort. It means constant contact with God, a constant effort to communicate and to quietly listen to him. It reminds me of a passage in scripture in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. It says, pray without ceasing. I like to say, pray without stopping. Constant contact, God. And when we pray something, he already knows what we're going to pray. We need to listen to what he has to say. Remember, God is always there. He always has and always will be. Psalms 139 that whole passage is one passage of scripture that reminds us of this. I want to close again with the scripture I opened with. I want you to hear this. 
Here's what the Apostle Paul says as he writes to the church at Galatia. He says, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I want you to think about that for a minute. You and I are in this walk. We're on this journey here on earth, however long God gives us. For the, for the believer, heaven is our final destination. But we have a God who gave himself for us. The Son of God gave himself for us. Jesus Christ gave himself for you and I. And here's what I want you to hear and understand. And because he loved us so much, he knows the journey. He knows the pain that we're going to go through. He knows everything about our lives. I need to live it in full faith and full trust in him. That even if it means death, and you know, God knows the, our beginnings and our ends. I think about the Apostle Paul and it came to mind for me that how he left us. The Apostle Paul, to me, man, should have been a guy who died in his, his old age. You know, based on my thing, how good he was, how when he changed, man, he was full on for the Lord. Yet his death came by him losing his head. He didn't have fear. That was his destiny. And even with all that we're going through, we need not worry. What we need to do, follow the rules, listen to God, hear what he has to say. He'll take care of us. He loves you and I. It's been a blessing sharing this word with you. Let me close in prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, may we adhere to your word. Holy Spirit, make it clear. May there not be uh, any unclearness in, in what was shared, but may it be clear to all of us. Change our hearts, direct us, make us more like you. May we give ourselves fully over to you. Lord, boost our trust. You said in the scriptures, in one place in scripture, that our, our life, through, you said through the apostle Paul, that in our, in our life, we go from glory to glory. And I pray that we'll do that. Lord, we give you honor and praise. We thank you for today. We thank you for our future, whether it's here on earth or in heaven. We thank you for being with us, always listening, never forgetting any of us. We thank you for a love that is from everlasting to everlasting. We thank you that from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Well, I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye now.